Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May grace and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ be unto us all. I want you to use the same greeting and greet the sister or brother sitting close to you. That may grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ be unto you. Very good. Uh, please uh, probably ask the person how was the day? How did the day go? Uh -huh. Talk. Talk a little. Talk a little. It's very important. It's very, very important. <laughs> Great. We want to use this opportunity to thank the Elohim for the opportunity he has granted us uh, to be at PIWC Sakomono this evening. We don't take it lightly at all. We see the hand of God in this move. And uh, we want to bless God so much for counting us worthy that during this all-important district week, continuing with Jesus, repositioning to win with Christ for maximum impact. The Lord counted us worthy out of the ministers in Tishinungwa and then out of the ministers in Greater Accra that when his servant Solomon Kwesiche was praying, the Lord laid us on his heart for us to come and be a part of the ceremony. We don't take it lightly at all. Humbly, let's lift up our hand and say, Father, we are grateful. God bless you. And then we want to use this opportunity to thank our brother, our friend. Uh, by God's grace, I have known Pastor Che for a while. I just like the way he is. He is a man of God. He is a man of God. And uh, if God grants you grace and uh, he pastors you, I believe that there are so much in him that through him the Lord will be able to use to bless you. But one thing that you easily see once you see this man of God is his humility. Uh, that one just comes out and then it invites you to him. Uh, it, it happened that he needed to work on a project for the youth ministry. When we were at Takwa House, he said. But before he would move to Winneba PIWC, he was at Ogwa. Uh -huh. And uh, we went with certain brothers in the north, and uh, they know our brother, Chaimi, friend Minuyam. And these brothers spoke so well before even our meeting. They spoke so well of him. So I wanted to meet him. Uh, yesterday I was telling, we were having lay leaders, and I was telling them that, I was telling the officers that, uh, when we meet, we pastors to also discuss officers. As when the officers and the MSM, they discuss us. That one is not a concern. Ah, that one is not a concern. It's a healthy discuss and a healthy way. And so if a person is good, his goodness will go ahead of him. In the same way, if the person is bad, <laughs> how bad he is will go ahead of him. So he had not met me, but we discussed him. And so I was looking for a day we will meet him and then Lo and behold, God granted us grace that he needed to work on a project for the youth ministry. Wow. The way this brother spoke with us and then taught us and brought us on board. He was supposed to apparently do a research for the various things we've been doing in the youth ministry. And a little time we spent with him, we really enjoyed his ministry. For the humility, it was A1. And I am praying same for Sakumono PIWC that may this humility of our resident minister, I am declaring over your life, may it work through all of us. May it work through all of us. Uh, because I've come to know in this calling, proud people don't go far. It is always the humble that stands out. And so, man of God, it isn't because we are here, but we want to say that may God continually bless you. We also want to appreciate the presiding elder and then the team of presbyters that are here, the elders, the deacons, the deaconesses, and then you that have also joined us in person and those that are joining us online from all over the world. God richly bless you all. Amen. I want to briefly share because I have today and tomorrow by God's grace and then by the kind help of our pastor. So I will start. I may not finish. I will continue, God willing, tomorrow. I'm still talking on the same team that the man of God gave to us, continuing with Jesus, repositioning to win with Christ for maximum impact. Today I'll look at Colossians 2, 6 to 7, 
And then God willing, tomorrow I'll look at Mark 4, 41. Colossians 2, 6 to 7 says that. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught. And overflowing with thankfulness. When I was reading the scripture, one thing that the Holy Ghost told me was that this is foundational to our call as Christians. Very foundational to our call. So he says that, so then, just as you received Christ. And so I was made to understand how did I receive Christ. The word of God was ministered. And I want this to be the picture throughout all that I'm sharing. The word of God was ministered. My heart was convicted. And after my heart was convicted, I chose to accept Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Take note, I didn't do anything. It was just to accept Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. The works had been completed. So all that I was supposed to do was to connect myself into the finished work of Christ because he had already won the victory. And he's saying that just as you received him, you received him out of grace. Romans 5 verse 8 has this to say. He says that God demonstrated his love towards us. In this, while we were yet sinners, Christ came to die. I want you to take notice of this. We didn't do anything. It was when we were still filthy. It was when people didn't even will not want to count us as part of what God is doing. It was when we were still dirty that Christ came for us. The gospel was ministered to us and we received it. And once we received, we, become, we became sons and daughters of the king. And so he's saying, if you didn't do anything and it was out of grace, the word was ministered to you. You accepted the word and then you came. He says, so then, just as you received Christ, continue to live your lives in him. It doesn't change. If you came by grace, you continue by grace and you end by grace. There is no change. There is no change. So you can't begin by grace and then later complete it or continue it with works. It starts by grace. It continues with grace and it ends with grace. So he says, so then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in him. And then he says, still foundational. Be rooted. Be built up. So being rooted, being built up, all ought to be in him. Ah, I am praying that you will get this one. Then he says that once you are rooted, once you are built up in him, then he says that be strengthened in the faith as you were taught. You were taught before you accepted him. You were taught before you could open up to him. You were taught before you accepted him as Lord. And he says that as you were taught, don't change it. And that is why Apostle Paul, who penned this same Colossians, was anointed with the church in Galatia. They had received Christ by faith. But at a point they felt that receiving Christ by faith wasn't enough. They ought to add some works. And Paul called them, oh, foolish Galatians. I pray may we not be a foolish generation. May we be a generation that understands that winning with Christ is by grace. We can win with Christ by works. And the man that is able to position himself continue to understand us and joys, glory from the Lord. May this same glory fall over your life. And I am speaking to all who care to hear. Everything about this I call it. Everything about this I call it is by grace. There is nothing we can do to merit it. It is too expensive to be bought. And that is why the discussion we are having this week is important. Many Christians today are burdened with so many things. But just as we receive Christ... It doesn't change when we are continuing. And it will not change when we are ending. The same grace that gave birth to us 
that same grace ought to continue with us. I will later, in completing this message, come back. Miles Morono, blessed memory, has made this observation. He says, if a purpose of a thing is not known, abuse of that particular thing is inevitable. What is purpose? Purpose is the problems we have been created to come and solve. See, God didn't make a mistake in bringing you to this church. There is a particular problem for which he brought you into this church. And if you can continue in the faith, you will have to know the purpose for which he brought you into this church. See, the day we will stand before God when our lives lease on earth is done, it will be about when I added you to the church, first, did you identify your purpose? Did you accomplish your purpose in the church? And were you useful to that church I sent you in? I pray, may God open our eyes for us to see why we are here. And so Miles Moron says that if the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse of that particular thing is inevitable. So if a man doesn't understand that just as he has received Christ, he ought to continue in him and to live his life in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthening the faith as he has been taught, and overflowing with thankfulness each and every time, the man will abuse his calling. Then Jane Jacques Rousseau, one French philosopher, has also said that Men or people are born free, but everywhere they go, they are in chains. I will explain. He says that men are born free, but everywhere they go, they are in chains. The interesting thing is that the day you accepted Christ, I'm bringing it to our walk with the Lord. The day you accepted Christ, you were bought into freedom and you were saved unto freedom. But as you continue with your faith, if you don't really understand why you are being called, you will think that Christianity ought to be completed and continue to the end with performance. But I want to submit to the church, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, Christianity is not performance. It is not just about obeying do's and don'ts. Christianity is a relationship. And it's a relationship with a person. The one that can make maximum impact is the one that understands this relationship. Once a man is able to understand the relationships, though burdens come without, within he will have the peace of God. But if a man doesn't understand this, the burdens without is going to feel the man to be burdened within and the life that Christ has given to that man cannot flow. How can I be thankful when all that I see around me is negativity? But I pray may God open our eyes. I've written here that life is God's gift to humankind. What we do with it is our gift back to God. And that is why it will be accounted for one day. The life God has given us is God's gift unto us. What we do with it is our gift back unto God. Think about it. Now seven things. I quickly want to run you through and then we will begin to pray. The very first one. The life that win. I call the seven grace words for reflection. And I know after this, because it's a whole week, I want you to spend time and then do a reflection on these seven words I'm sharing with you. After that, I will be done. The first one is that. The life that wins is not attained, but obtained. Let me say it again. We are talking about continuing with Christ. We are talking about winning with Christ. And I am saying that the life that wins, that life is not attained. That life is obtained. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, the verse 28, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. The life that wins it's not attained. In our school cycle and in everywhere we find ourselves, it is full of performances. But Christianity is not performance. And so if a man will want to win with Christ, that man will have to come to the reality to understand that once he comes to Christ, he is more than willing. He is more than willing. He is more than willing to give you rest. And so I can't come to Christ and still be burdened. If any man comes to Christ and the person is still burdened, then the question is, how did the person receive Christ? It goes back to the Colossians. 
come if you think you are heavy laden and you are burdened. He says once you come to him, he is going to give you rest. There is rest in Christ. May you receive rest in this district week. As we are continuing with Jesus, may the rest of God surround your life. And may the rest, if there has been troubled anywhere, if there have been sorrows anywhere, as we are speaking to you and we are telling you that continuing with Jesus, just as we have received him, it comes by grace. It is continued by grace and it ends in grace. May this grace speak for you. It doesn't matter the report the doctor has given to you. I am telling you, he says that come to me. If there is any burden, he says, I will give you rest. The master is able. The master is able. The master is able. May you receive rest all around you in the name of Jesus. And so the light that wins is not attained, it is obtained. Number two, the light that wins is not a changed life, but rather an exchange life. The life that wins is not a change life, it's an exchange life. God understands it in reading 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Scripture says that therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that fellow is the new creation. That is how the uh, NIV put it. Says, that person is the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And so God knows the challenges that exist in this world. He is, not, he is not oblivious to the challenges that are in this world. He knows there are challenges. He knows there are troubles. He knows there are problems. But I like the song. I don't know if you can help me sing the song. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and deeds to bear. What a privilege to come. Reflect on the lyrics of the song. What a friend we have in Jesus. One to go. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. What says that we carry needless pain because we don't choose to take everything. He didn't say some things. 
He didn't say some burdens are so light. He says you should carry everything to God in prayer. See, once the Christian becomes weak in his or her prayer life, he becomes a burden Christian. And troubles surround that Christian everywhere. Once the Christian choose to be a prayer warrior, whether things are going the way he expected or not, things begins to change. I pray as we continue with Jesus, may your zeal for prayer be kindled. May your zeal for waiting on a father be kindled. And so he says that if any man is in Christ, that man is the new creation. The Greek rendering of the new day is kainos. One that is new. The one that doesn't have a past. The one that is recent. The one that God himself has made. And you see, the reason why God makes us, when we believe in him, when we accept him as our Lord and personal Savior, he knows the challenges that are in this world. And you know the problems you are going to encounter. And so God makes you new. So that you will not have your reference in the Adamic nature. But your reference will be in him. So that once your reference is in him. As he overcame you will also overcome. And so let me say this. When the Christian fails. God sits in heaven. And God feels sad. Challenges are not meant to destroy us. And that is why he said it elsewhere. That he will not allow things that are above us to come upon us. And in other words, whatever that comes to us, God knows we can handle it. So the challenges you are facing now, God can trust you. And you see, when we go to any war front, the best soldiers are placed at where the battle is the fiercest. They are not placed where there are no battles. They are placed where the battle is fiercest because they are skilled and they are trusted. Can God trust you in the challenge you are having? The only thing he wants you to do when the challenges are becoming too much is for you to come to him. He wants to meet you in the morning. He wants to meet you in the afternoon. He wants to meet you at night. This is what the Lord has taught me. Fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters. When God is not getting our attention, he increases our challenges. So that once the challenges are increasing, you will be able to turn and look up to him. You will be able to turn and tell him that God, I cannot carry it alone. But unfortunately, when the challenges are increasing, instead of turning up to our God, we choose to turn to our skills. We choose to focus on the things that can help us. And at times when God sees that his attention is not being gotten, he increases the challenges the more. I pray may we not learn out of that. But may God help us to be focused so that in our call with him and in our continuing with him, we will understand that one thing that ought to characterize our life is victory all through. You can't be with him and fail. You can't be with him and be disappointed. You can't be with him and say that I am so bad and I'm confused and I am thinking she said it's an option. No, it is never an option. You have been made to be able to confront the challenges of this life and to overcome when they come. And so every challenge God brings your way, it is because he trusts you. And God knows you will overcome. May God grant you the grace to be an overcomer. And may you win with Jesus. The third thing, the life that wins is not a life of suppression, but rather a life of expression. The life that wins is not a life of suppression, but rather a life of expression. And so Galatians 2.20 has this to say. He says that I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body. I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I have been crucified with Christ. I don't have time to go through this. Our brothers and sisters, the life that wins is an express life. It is lived in faith. That's what the Bible says that the righteous shall live by their faith. How strong is your faith? And scripture says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So once challenges are increasing, it is time to give attention to the word. It is time for you to let the word which you have been created out of fill you, move you, and cause you to stand the way that you are. May this grace continually be available. So it's not a life of suppression. The life that wins is not a life of suppression, but a life of expression. 
And so when the challenges are all, are all around us, we don't hide. When the challenges are all around us, like, like David, when other Israelites were trying to hide in front of Goliath, David's life was being expressed because there was a special oil over his life. Once men are saying there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up. Once men are saying that nothing can work out, you can declare because of the cry that is in you that I will overcome. I will go through the challenges and I will come with victory. May this grace be available to you. Listen, to this life of expression, the Bible tells us again in the book of Psalms, chapter 84. Let me quickly read this and then let me try and go through the others. It talks about the man that goes through the valley of Baca. Let me quickly run through. It says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. Psalm 84. My soul yearns even faint for the court of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a net for herself. Where she may have a young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, the valley of Baca is the valley of sorrow. The valley of Baca is the valley of suppression. The valley of Baca is the valley of no hope. The valley of Baca is the valley that when men get there, they give up. But the Bible says that these people, because their strength is not found in themselves, it is not found in their work, it is not found in their children, it is not found in their connection, their strength is found in God. Bible says that while they go through the valley of Baca, hear me, the Bible says that they make it a place of springs. And so in the midst of challenges, in the midst of pain, in the midst of difficulties, they are able to turn their situations around. And the Bible says that they make it a valley of spring. Your challenges will not kill you. Your challenges will not kill you. Your challenges will not dampen your faith. Your challenges will cause you to overflow because you have come to know this God in whose presence you find your strength. Ah, may the glory of God overshadow your life. And the Bible says again that they, as they pass to the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn ruins also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till it appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on your shield. Look on our shield, oh God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tent of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he behold from those whose work is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. May your trust be the Lord. And so this life that wings is not a life of suppression. It's a life of expression. Things doesn't coil us. Situation doesn't dampen us. Situation rather expresses us in the midst of darkness we shine. May you go out of this district week and go and shine. May you look at the face of the problem and tell the problem that you are not bringing me down. It has happened that in time past I cried over you. In time past I gave up because of you. But now I am coming so strong. I am turning you around. I am standing because my strength is in the Lord. My strength is not in myself. My strength is in the ability of God. And God through me is turning things around may you shout and say things are changing may you shout and say the glory of the Lord is going out ahead of me may you shout and say I always win and I don't fail in the name of Jesus may that be your reality in Jesus name the fourth one says that a life that win is invested a life that win is invested see this Christianity we are talking about is a glorious life but if any man can win, if any man can make a difference, he ought to learn to invest his life. Whatever we give in church is not wasted. The time we spent in church is not wasted. We are rather investing it. Yes. Whatever we do in the house of God. Now, no, on Sunday we're going to give offering. Anytime you are giving an offering, understand us. The life that wins is an invested life. And so, Matthew chapter 13, 45 and 46, because of time, he says that again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and showed everything he had and bought it. 
the kingdom of God is being compelled to a merchant that is looking for pearls. And so if you are a member of Sakumono PIWC, the word of God that comes to us are pearls. See, it will work for you according to your faith. It will work for The Bible says that the people of Israel didn't benefit from the word that came to them on the wilderness because they didn't miss it out with faith. And so every message that is preached from the pulpit, it is for you. It depends on how you receive it. And once you choose to let the word work in your life, the Bible says that you are investing. He says that once this man found a bell of godly value, he went and showed all. What he means is that once a message comes and it concerns your situation, you give attention to the message. So the message produces in you what is said, you don't give up. You don't give in. You become like the accounts who say, Apetampe. You have become so much bullheaded that no matter the circumstances and no matter the situations you are receiving, you still say, Chidike se, Wubo se no, Na oshe, Nyame, Ampara osreo, Adia, Into, I heard your ear. Now, Otsim, 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 say, Now, Otsim, say, Yeah, Otsim, I don't know the situation that has become like Goliath before you, but I came to tell you. See, God has not brought this, brought you this far to disgrace you. God has not brought you this far to let situations bring you down. In fact, you detect to the circumstances of life because the greater one is in you. May you rise up in your faith life and may your declarations back your faith life and may you start changing situations to the glory of God. May this be your phenomenon in Jesus' name. Let me quickly run through. The fifth one. Victory should be the normal Christian experience and defeat should be abnormal. Please say it with me. Victory will be my normal Christian experience. Oh, please shout, shout. Let the devil hear you. Say victory will be my normal Christian experience. Defeat is abnormal to me everywhere. Hallelujah. And so let me say, he says that it should be strange if a Christian does not overcome. Instead, it should be considered common if they do. So 1 John 5, 4 to 5 says that for everyone born of God overcomes the world. You see, it is one thing for you to affirm to the scripture. And it's another thing to be a living reality of the scripture. But what I am saying in relation to investing your Christian life is that when you see some of these scriptures, you give yourself to it. So you get testimonies out of the scriptures. You don't stop. You don't give in. You let it become your focus and you work at it. Because when the man found a pearl of godly value, the Bible says that he sold all that he had and then he bought it. We are not being asked to buy it. But we are being taught to always focus and to give attention. The more we focus, the more we give attention, the more we get the godly pearls in the kingdom. May victory be your paradigm. The set one, you deceive yourself as a Christian if you think that sinning is inevitable. No thought hurts our Lord than this kind of attitude. You deceive yourself as a Christian if you think that sinning is inevitable. No thought hurts our Lord than this kind of attitude. God has brought us to a place According to Romans chapter 8, verse 14, he says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God overcome sin, and sin becomes inimical to them. They stand, they are able to face sin, and they tell sin no without regret. 
May that be your normal. Then the last one, victory to the Christian. Victory to the Christian is a gift and not a reward. I'm ending with that. Victory to the Christian is a gift and not a reward. First Corinthians 15, 57 says that, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory is a gift. It's not a reward. If it comes to something being a gift, we don't work for gift. And that is what Colossians, that we are using as our main theme test, is telling us. We don't work for victory. But we move from victory to victory. We are born in victory. We continue in victory. And we end in victory. And we are characterized. Jesus was a conqueror. But we are more than a conqueror. Because whatever Jesus overcame, we didn't only enjoy that. But now we stand with him. And once we know our place and we take our place, we change situations. To end, consciousness of victory, understanding grace and law. I'm ending with this one. Under the law, God required man to work for him. But under grace, God works for man. Under law, if a man works for God, sin will reign over him. But under grace, if a, a man allows God to work for him, we rest in victory. Can we humbly be on our feet? Can we humbly be on our feet? We want to work on this. <laughs>